Hello. Some of you may notice I look a little tired today. Um, that's because I spent the last seven days doing absolutely nothing while staying alert at the same time. And it's difficult. Even when I go to bed, I now sleep with one eye open and I'm in a state of semi-arousal. This reminds me of one of my first jobs. Uh, I used to be a bird scarer. Some of you might find that hard to believe, but I've, I've still got the jacket. Human scarecrow, and I worked in a cherry orchard in Kent. Uh, they paid me half with cannabis, and I can't remember what the other half was. I just ended up really paranoid of birds. My name's Paul Ricketts, and this is me, not live, in London. Staying alert, what does it really mean? I believe it's similar to just saying stay paranoid. And that's why I think people who believe in conspiracy theories are enjoying this so much, even after they've been told they can go outside. Also, I think stoners are completely prepared for a pandemic. I mean, they're used to staying at home, sitting on the sofa, watching TV. When they go shopping, they still go to the all-night garage at three o'clock in the morning, no queues. I believe there's probably stoners in this country that have no idea there's a pandemic going on. So how alert should we stay? Should we stay as alert as a £10 an hour security guard? Should we stay as alert as a soldier on sentry duty protecting the Queen? Should we stay as alert as a long distance lorry driver weaving across lanes as he's checking his iPhone off his tits on Pro Plus? I think the answer might be the final one. Sorry about that. Um, I think I must have left me flies open. The government announced that school communal singing can only take place in open spaces. Ring your ring your roses, a pocket full of poses, a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down. Sport. I miss it, but I do realise that during a pandemic it can't come back as a mass spectator thing and that matches and games will have to take place behind closed doors. So I was interested to see that South Korean team FC Seoul had decided to replace their crowd with what they thought were mannequins but turned out to be sex dolls. I just hope that they spent the money and didn't buy second hand. And is it safer? Um, I don't know. I mean, if a player scores and jumps into the crowd to celebrate, he could mistake it for the wives and girlfriends section and never return to the pitch. And a closer look at the dolls showed that they weren't just placed willy-nilly. This supporter here, looking at her watch as if she can't wait for the game to be over because she wants to go on a hot date. And social distancing. Why? One of the advantages of sex dolls is that you know you won't catch anything. Poor old FC Seoul, however, uh, they face now fines or points deductions, so we can safely say that the whole thing blew up in their faces. Thank you. Hello, Binky. How's the morale of the men? It's not good, sir. Battle fatigue, we've lost so many good chaps. Smudger, Bertie and the Beaumont brothers. Big Alf and Little Dicky all cashed in their chips. Not Little Dicky gone. Yes, sir. He bought it, sir. Little Dicky's bit of dust, sir. Locked so many over the last five years. Such a waste. Things are gonna change when we get back to Blighty. Now listen, men. Good God, we've all seen our fair share of death. And when things are bleak, that's when I think of Blighty. I remember why we're fighting over here, boys. That's our advantage over the enemy. We're not fighting for some despicable ideology. So remember, we're fighting for the economy. We've been told that taking on the virus is like a war against an invisible enemy. And at the start, we were told to make sacrifices to save the NHS. And now we seem to have saved the NHS 
Other people are telling us to make sacrifices to save the economy. And as someone who's in one of the most susceptible groups, why should I make the ultimate sacrifice for the economy? I've got to be honest, there's been many times when the economy was doing very well and it completely ignored me. I don't know if I want to give my life for the economy. For one thing, it's never sent me a birthday card. It's never done the washing up. It's never even liked one of my posts on social media. And if the poor, ethnic minorities, overweight and people with underlying conditions, if we make the ultimate sacrifice for the economy, how will we be rewarded? Will there be a statue of me in Trafalgar Square in 40 years time saying, least we forget with the share price scrolling underneath it? UK's major supermarkets ask shoppers to wear full PPE. Swap nurse. Yes, doctor. Thank you. A bottle of Lambrini and a packet of B&H, please, nurse. Yes, doctor. Cardiac arrest. Stand clear for CPR. I think it's the girl on the till scanning your purchases, doctor. That'd be £10.68, please. So during the pandemic, all pubs have been closed and it's a disaster for me professionally and personally. I think all of us have suffered not being able to go to our designated place where we can get pissed. And location with drinking in this country is important. So if you were to come around to my place and find I had a drinks cabinet full of whiskies, you'd go, wonderful, what a fantastic and generous person. If you were to find out I had a wine cellar, you'd go, well, what a connoisseur of the vintner's art. But if you were to find just half a bottle of whiskey underneath my driver's seat, you'd be going crazy. Paul, you've got a problem. Paul, you need to get help. Paul, I'm getting off this bus. During the lockdown, we're now drinking 30% more alcohol and a lot of us are doing this at home, which is frowned upon. So once again, location is very important. But we can't go to the pub. So now we're starting to go to the parks. And I think that's unfair on the people who traditionally drank in the park. And I'm talking about your novice or your professional drinker. And when I say novice, I mean teenagers who every evening would use the park for their cider fueled mating rituals. And your professional, the down and out, who would use the park in an effort to drown out the world. And now it seems we would have joined the down and outs in the park if only they put in more effort with a blanket on the grass and drinking their special brew out of jam jars. Oh look, it's those elderly hipsters in the park again, having a mini festival. Well, the sun's over the yard arm, let's join them. But now it actually is the hipsters drinking in the park. And you don't know when you see a trampy looking bloke in the undergrowth, if it's Ian Beale from EastEnders having a nervous breakdown or Dominic Cummings on quarantine. Will you? Yes, you will. Five hours! I'm staying constantly alert. No coffee, no sugar, no artificial stimulants, just natural alertness. Look at these eyes! Thank you for watching this show. But we've reached the end. Sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do me flies up. That's better.